Hello, everybody, and welcome back to tonight's UW Esports Rocket League Games of the Week. Tonight, we'll be bringing you two best of three matches. First set will be featuring UW Esports Rocket League as they go head to head against University of Guadalajara. And the second set will be against Colorado AM. As you all know, our esports program seeks to build and foster community, open those many doors to the vast career opportunities in the field of gaming, and promote the virtues of healthy competition. Through esports, we are able to communicate with one another, forming and developing digital communities so necessary in these challenging times we have been facing. We hope you enjoy being a part of our community and we invite you to get more involved. Follow us here on our Twitch or on our UW Esports Discord server, as well as on our many social channels at U of Wa Esports. Now, to introduce ourselves, I am Caleb or Hydra Canine. I'm currently a third year at the University of Washington. I'm going to be one of your casters for the night. And I'm Cade. Uh, I'm a, a grad student at UW. I, I'm also the sub for the, the, the Rocket League team here. I'm just really excited. This is my first time casting, so it should be fun. Ooh, we're going to get to walk you through your first little bit of casting here. Start yep. to show off your face to everybody. That's really exciting. That's <laughs> definitely something that's, that's fun to be a part of. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. All right, Cade, what do we know about these two teams? Because if I'm being honest, I have very little information information on either of these teams. I don't think I've ever seen University of Guadalajara play, and I might have seen Colorado a and play, but it was definitely a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, I, I've i never... So University of Guadalajara, that's totally new because uh, Mexican teams being in uh, CRL is new as of this season. So all these Mexican teams are going to be new, and it's, it'll be exciting to see how they do. Um, and then the other one, Colorado a and I I don't know if I know... Uh, I've definitely seen previous Colorado State teams play before, but I don't know if this I've seen this team play. Um, yeah, I think, just add, so. I think something worth adding to that though is we haven't seen this this UW team play either, so that's gonna be really exciting to see how that goes. Yeah, definitely. We're bringing a whole set of three new UW esports players to you guys tonight, and you'll get to see them in action for the first time as they play against these two schools that we also haven't seen play before. So it's definitely a whole lot of new Rocket League, lots of new play styles. It's definitely something exciting to to get into. So, Kate, what are you expecting from our team? What do you think, you know, they're going to do well, going to do, you know, a little bit poorly, something they need to work on? What What are you expecting out of these boys from UW Sports? Well, I I don't have a whole lot of expectations because I've, I've I've played with Vin and Bunker a little bit. I've I've only played with uh, Aslan at um like once during the the tryouts. Um. But I mean, all three of them are like very talented. They're mechanical players. It'll be interesting to see how they play, like how the chemistry is. That's what I'm most interested to see, especially yeah, with yeah. a team that's only been around together for like a week now. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely a tough spot to be in for these guys. Like you yeah. said, like Bunker and Vin, two players that I've definitely seen play before, been a part of the kind of club community for a while. Uh, and then Aslan is new to me as well. But Bunker is a super mechanical player super yeah. good on the six like definitely really fun to watch booker play and vin being like a super solid just well you know cut and paste solid rocket league player everything you'd expect from a good rocket league player that's what i see out of vin good defensive rotation good offensive rotation good positioning and then i guess oslin is going to be our our wild card there yeah. um you know trying to see how that fits into this this new squad and kind of seeing how they perform against these teams that we haven't seen play before yeah, yeah, I'm excited. I mean, so from what I the the little I have seen of Aslan, he's like, uh, I, I believe he's like a ones main, um, or at least he was in the past. So I'm I'm hoping to see some like uh, impressive mechanical feats. That I mean, he was he was very fast at tryouts and and uh, he was fun to play with. So it should be cool. I think with that we we are all excited to see how this team plays together. And I think with that we get into game one against University of Guadalajara. So a kickoff from the start for UW here. Booker following this ball up to the wall. Good read there as he plays it downfield. Getting this ball on top of the car already. A flick and that's gonna be goal number one. First 10 seconds of the game. Vin with a great catch there. And a solid pop right over that defender. Yeah, it looks like a good start. We didn't know what to expect. And they're showing us what to expect right off the bat. Yeah, definitely a good way to debut your team on this Switch channel. 
ball downfield here. Oh, I'm just trying to kind of regain some control. He's going to have a lot of space in the midfield, and that right there is what I was talking about. Just a good, solid, smart player taking his time on that ball, not forcing anything, and taking a good 50 instead of making a poor challenge. Also with a good 50 in the air there, Ben able to follow that one up, and this ball's going to be free on the bottom of the side of the field. Boots with a shot. Very close save there, but too much power on that one is going to lead to goal number two for UW Sports and a solid start to game one. Yeah, one thing I really liked about that last play was Oslan going for the air dribble and prioritizing the 50 in the middle of the air there. So that's like making sure that any touch the opponent is going to get, he's going to be able to follow it up really easily. And that essentially led to that goal. Yeah, it's definitely it's something we like to really see. Awkward. Those big brain, smart, patient plays, not trying to force anything too mechanical and instead taking that advantage and, you know, getting that solid 50 and, and putting that ball in a good spot for your team is definitely what we want to see out of our players out here on the field. A lot of back and forth here in the midfield. Bunker off the wall, going to get it over one. Double opportunity, but just a little out of reach. And following this one up, playing that out center. Bunker right there. Oh, oh, put it in top <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a solid start here. Booker just placing those in the great spots. Been with a little pop for goal number one. Booker with two goals after that. Now we're up three to nothing two minutes into this match. Definitely a tough spot to be in if you're Guadalajara. Really close on the double tap there. What are you seeing out of Guadalajara here that you think they need to do different, Dave? Um, I, I mean, so far it seems like they're just kind of getting outpaced a little bit. Um, so I'm not sure what they can do, but maybe maybe play up a little bit further, try to account for the, the kind of speed that, that UW is bringing. I think they're, yeah, just giving, they're giving UW too much time. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think that the pacing is just a little bit mismatched here. Yeah. And, it, you know, it could be first game against these guys, just trying to get a feel for their play styles and having a little bit of trouble accounting for that speed. It could also just be you know, a bit of a a difference in, in speed and pacing uh, to begin with. But I think, like you said, cutting off that midfield, taking up as much space from you as possible, and really like challenging them as quickly as you can, not letting them have that space that they're used to having so far, it will put them in a much better spot, especially defensively, to uh, bring the score back on this game. Yeah, that's something that be right. I mean, that seems to be something that, that UW is doing a really good job of to start here is having midfield control. Exactly, and with mechanics like that, <laughs> yeah. it's definitely easy to have that midfield control, being able to carry that ball over the heads of not only one, but two defenders, and taking a 50 on the third. Yeah, that's another really nice example of Oslan doing the same thing there. Uh, coming off the backboard and following up and getting a strong 50 to work. I mean, we're still on defense here, but they were able to get it out momentarily. Exactly. And that moment of time is all it takes to, you know, recover your boost, recover your rotations. This ball popped high, Ben with a chance for the double. He, oh, so close there. Just barely bouncing off that top crossbar. Ball played off the wall here as Brook is up for this one. Trying to touch at the corner. No one there to follow that one up from Guadalajara. I'm give you a bit of time here to make this clear. Awesome with a smart play there, trying to take a 50. White working out in their favor. And trying to take a 50 in the corner. So a bit of possession here. Looks like you know pretty low on boost, but just enough to get it out. That's going to give them the time that they need to recover here as that ball's pinched in front of net. No one there to follow up that one up. Probably getting boost, like I said. Yeah, that's, that's ex I think that's exactly what was happening. It seems like uh, Guadalajara has really changed uh, the intensity in the last like, few minutes here. Mostly UW on defense, but so the one time they do get this counter-attacking opportunity, no one's there to, to finish. But, you know, being up three goals, definitely not something they needed. Sorry, yeah. two goals. <laughs> as that one no. is slotted into net by Brand. That's gonna, yeah. you know, give them a little bit of, of confidence there. I think Game one is a bit finished here, but going into game two, coming off of a goal, it's definitely where you want to be if you're Guadalajara, especially with how on the back foot you've never seen in the second half of this game. 
Yeah, you definitely want to like try to have that momentum, and also it, it seems like Guadalajara is starting to find some things that are working against you, Dub. So they'll they can work that into the next game. Even with this last goal at the end here, um, maybe this. Uh... Yeah, definitely, definitely a change of pace that we saw in the second half of that game that gave Guadalajara a bit of bit of presence on the field that they didn't quite have out the gate. And I think that, you know, that's due to, like you said, a bit of a pacing change, a bit of a play style change uh, that, you know, led to a bit of discomfort on UW's defense. Yeah, I wonder I wonder how much of it was also UW kind of sitting back and, and being like, like happy with the lead that they had, which can, you know, is nice when you, if it's if done successfully, but can be dangerous if you if you let people kind of keep peppering shots at the net. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. We've seen it before, you know, teams go up three, four, even five goals, and they get a little complacent because they've, you know, they figure out, oh, I'm at this lead. I've got all this this space, all these insurance goals. Uh, and they they let their guard down a little bit, and those teams are able to find those gaps and find that difference in pacing from just the complacency and get a couple of goals on net, which could have been what we were seeing from Guadalajara there at the end, just finding those gaps that UW were giving them. Because um, like you said, you know, it, it's not always worth risking you know, shots, risking offense when you're up by that much. But if you do let off the gas a little too much, you start giving that space that the other team can definitely capitalize on. Yeah, exactly. Right. This is the, the old like best defense is a good offense type type thing, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think with that we see how Guadalajara takes that momentum from game one, two goals right at the end, and they bring that into game two right here. Here a bit neutral. Good speed there from Aslan. Really able to do much with it, but this is awkwardly floating. Oh, Not quite sure what happened there. I'm guessing a bit of a missed boost grab from Guadalajara out the gate. But it's definitely tough to say exactly what happened there. Those, one of those weird fluke goals that you see every once in a while. Good pressure there from UW. Been up for this one, getting a touch. Getting it high, forcing boost issues, and that's a great 50 for Boomer right in front of the net. That's going to be goal number two for UW, and again, a quick start, just like we saw in game one. Yeah. Yeah, really strong for a strong dunk there right on the goal line to finish net. Another one here. Interesting. <laughs> a really quick start, like you said. <laughs> Man, I mean, three goals, 30 seconds, that's, that's a good pace. I think, you know, we, we keep that up, we keep going for the rest of the game come out with, you know, 10, 12 goals. Yeah, but now what I'm interested to see is does this game go the same way as the last one where uh, where Guadalajara starts to figure something out or maybe UW starts to get complacent with uh, their three-goal lead? Yeah, definitely going to be interesting to see. I, I mean, UW got up three goals in game one around, you know, the halfway point, around that, yeah. like, two-minute, 30-second mark. And being up three goals with four minutes left in the game, four minutes is a lot of time. And Guadalajara is going to have that time to get one goal. And all they need is two more here. As UW, like you said, may have been a bit on the back foot, a bit complacent. So it'll be interesting to see if they're able to keep that pace up. Good high pop there from Aslan. This one's going to be off the backboard. Trying for a double. Not quite able to follow that one up. And playing this off the wall. Backboard as well. Booker gonna be able to follow that up for a solid 50. Good positioning there from UW overall. I like to see that good follow through, good rotations off of those ball bounces and 50 plays. But it's not gonna be enough as this counter attack gives Guadalajara their second goal of the match, and they're now only at a one goal deficit. And with the ball off the corner, Tareka with. Good clear there. Lots of space from UW. And this is going to be goal number three. Not quite sure where UW's defense Yeah, I, I think you said it exactly right. They're just giving him too much space there. The same kind of thing, sitting back and, and happy with the lead they have. But now they no longer have that. Yeah, now it's tie game. We're back 0-0 with three seconds. Or sorry, three minutes left. Uh, definitely a, a bit of a tough lead to give up if you're UW. But that's definitely what uh, happens when you start to get a little on the on the back foot and give that team a bit more space than you can handle. Touch 
rushes there from yeah, Azzer really playing like this one center. That. We like to see that when people are there to follow it up, but it doesn't look like oh. anyone was. And this is going to be goal number four for Guadalajara. A good try from Aslan, but no teammates there to finish that one. It's going to lead to a solid clear. Yeah, I mean, Aslan really took his time to sort of slow the play down and, and beat two guys on, on one dribble, but no one in the center and then no one on the far side of the field to, to keep the ball in either. My guess would be boost grabs. That's usually the culprit in that situation. Just a little out of position there, not grabbing yeah. your pennies. Bit of a double commit there from UW Bunker with the cancel. Nice and that's going to be a nice pass and a nice shot there from Aslan. Definitely what we want to see as they tie this game up again. Another score reset with two minutes left in the match. with the double, <laughs> the double flip reset helicopter attempt there. I think he was going for this flip reset stall. <laughs> That's what we like to see in these matches. We, you know, I like to see a little bit of style on the field. And Booker is definitely a player that's going to bring that as they continue to play these matches. And with a good beat there, Guadalajara right there to put this back in. The touch from Aslan is going to play that out. Booker with a high touch off the ceiling. No one's here to follow this one up. A missed touch there from Guadalajara is going to give UW the possession back. We're trying to get a touch. A good 50 there from Guadalajara. This ball high. This is dangerous for Vin. For Vin, yeah. Oh, what a save there. Tough read, and that's going to be a ball cleared for UW. Played right back in here. Booker with a bit of possession. A good 50 there. Be followed up by Vin. Trying to play this one out. This is a dangerous ball in the center. Good 50 from Aslan, and it looks like they're going to have a bit of space here. All up backboard. Here's a shot from UW. Vin trying to follow that one up, but not quite able to get around it. Yeah, really unfortunate. They really set the house there, and, and uh, I believe it was Booker with the demo. Had a great opportunity, but just couldn't quite capitalize. Definitely good, solid defensive rotations from Guadalajara there. In that risky spot, we're able to get those 50s that were needed. Big saves. Of time wasted here in the corner. Luka just trying to bait out that challenge from Guadalajara, but they were not taking it as they play this ball high over UW's net. Dangerous ball floating in the center, but Bunker's right there to collect. Four to four with 20 seconds left. Will we see some extra Rocket League in game two? Spin plays this ball off the corner. A good 50 out from Guadalajara, but Aslan there to play this one back in. It's going to be ball on net. Brand with a high clear. Demo in the back line from Guadalajara. This ball's going to be played out high. Been a bit awkward here. A good touch to the sidewall. That's going to buy UW the time they need to take this one to overtime. Yeah, it looks like he just elected to kill it rather than uh, force the issue there. Definitely a good Hard option, decision. I think. Yep. Uh, being last man back there. And this is going to be a bit of a weird ball from UW. Vin there to take that 50, oh. but not a great touch from Bunker. Bit unfortunate as that ball gets 50 in front of the net. That's going to lead to the first win for Guadalajara, bringing the series one to one in the best of three. Yeah, that's just a, that that last touch there was makes it really tough on 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 Booker. Um, but I, I think what what we want to see there is is Booker trying to like make sure he stays in front of the in front of the ball and just take any 50 he can get. Uh, make sure to not allow that that uh that dunk into the net at the end yeah definitely tough if you're bunker but you know not too much you can do there as that ball starts to get away from you it's hard to take a really solid 50 especially that close to the net and with your car sideways another um, another thing is his camera angle might have been such that he didn't know how quickly the challenge was coming so the, there might have been a communication issue where uh he's just not aware that he needs to be in a position to to make a save so quickly you know yeah, exactly. I think that's something that doesn't get covered much when, you know, we're talking and casting over these games. But, you know, what we're seeing is not necessarily what every player on the field is seeing. So uh, it's definitely a good thing to keep in mind. Sometimes that camera gets real wonky and you start to miss out on information uh, that, that's definitely crucial. And, you know, if you're Bunker in that scenario, a lot of pressure on you with that ball in front of your car, right in front of the net uh, to, to get a good 50. And, you know, with that high stress situation, especially in overtime, 
uh, it can be really tough to to get that good positioning with with a quick challenge from the other team. And it looks like Guadalajara was able to you know make the most out of that situation and get their first win. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and you know with the camera angles being so so weird in, in certain situations, that's where like effectively communicating with your teammates is is becomes most important, right? Like uh, being able to get that information from your teammates when you don't have it through your camera can make a huge difference. Yeah, definitely. You know, we saw a lot of, of difference from Guadalajara in game two. I feel like they, you know, came on a bit stronger there and were able to keep up with the pace that UW set at the beginning of both games, you know, scoring three quick goals right out the gate in game one and in game two. What did you see, you know, big changes from Guadalajara? What do you think they were doing differently there to, uh, you know, kind of dominate UW in, in game two? Well, it, it seems like we were seeing the the Guadalajara from the, the last, uh, like, two minutes or so of the first game. I'm not exactly sure what kind of changes they made. I'm, one thing I'm going to look for in this next one is um, if they're doing a lot of boost st stealing, because it, it seems like UW has been kind of stretched um, where they're where they're sort of separated. And they they can't put anything together because they're not following up touches, and that might come down to just UW being either poor boost management or or a really effective boost stealing from Guadalajara. Yeah, I mean we definitely saw that on multiple occasions with. Balls crossing in front of net, you know, being on defense and not able to get clears because of, you know, low low boost anchor and boost grabbing. So it'll be definitely a, a good thing to keep an eye on from Guadalajara, whether or not they're doing a good job of boost stealing and starving UW, or if it's a bit of poor boost management on UW's behalf. But we're not going to be able to see that until we get into game three. So let's go ahead and do that right now. This is the make or break right here. Series tied one to one in this best of three. Bunker up for this ball. Good 50 from Guadalajara, making it a bit tough for you, Dub. As Aslan, good patience, good control, is able to get a solid clear. Followed up by Vin. Bunker putting this one high. Good rotations from Guadalajara puts a player in net to make that save. Not very much boost on the U Dub half. But it is enough for Aslan to try for a double there. Bunker with a nice high shot. And what we've been See seeing that? all night. Those That's just great. Great I mean, corner placements. He, and the fact that he was up there in the play still makes a huge difference. I think the, the UW that we're seeing at the end of the last game, there's not even somebody in the middle of the field to make that play. And not only was he there to make the play, he had an incredible shot as well. Yeah, definitely what we want to see from UW. A bit of an open net here. If Bunker's able to beat anyone to this ball, Sorry, Vin, but not quite able to get to that one in time. Aslan playing this one high. Bunker turning for it. Not quite able to put a shot on as Vin has a bit of time in the back line. Playing this one out. Breaker with a challenge, getting demoed off that touch. What a read from Aslan there. Seeing that challenge, knowing exactly where that ball was going to go and predicting it perfectly. Yeah, and also it looked like there was some really nice communication on that last... Uh, I mean, the shot didn't go in, but but you see Aslan had a had a play on it, but he didn't take it, and, and we get a, a much better shooting opportunity from either Vin or Bunker. I don't remember which one took it. Yeah, definitely something that... One of those minute details that you don't necessarily notice. Uh, that That's definitely good to point out, that communication difference, those leaves, those fake challenges, things like that. All making space for your teammates. A bit of an open net miss there. We had a Guadalajara player kind of diving early and not quite able to put that one on and no one to follow it up. That's going to put Udo back on defense here. As Guadalajara has a shot on net. In with a good save to corner. A little bit of a double on the in the net there. Looks like they're going to survive though. Aslan with ball on the wall playing this one out. Not exactly the touch that we want, but Vin right there to follow that one up. Save Aslan from a bit of a pass. The other team, Bunker with the great read off that pass from Vin, and that's going to be another top Vin's goal for Bunker. That looks a lot like the, the play we saw in the, in the first game with Vin off the side wall on the right side there. Bunker finishing top Vin's as well in that shot. Definitely what we want to see from UW, and another great play shot from Aslan. And here we see it again, UW with that 3-0 lead. Can they maintain it? Yeah, one thing I've, it seems like we've got a, this UW team is, is pretty like, um, they like build on their own momentum. 
if you notice, like, the second game and this game, all the goals have been, like, back to back to back. Exactly. Um, I don't remember exactly the first one, but certainly they had the first three. Yeah, definitely, uh, like you said, building on their own momentum, I think that's important for, for these players to kind of maintain. Once you have that momentum and have that kind of mindset control for the game, you know, you're getting those three quick goals, shot opportunity here, not able to make that one connect. But as I was saying, you know, you, you start to get a little control on the mental side of the game, uh, going up three goals really fast, kind of putting the other team on their back foot right out the gate. It'd be really important to keep that momentum and, and keep control of the headspace for the game. Yeah, and I think uh, w what I would like to see from UW here is just like not waiting until they get a goal to, to play aggressive like they, they have been. And then once they get a few goals, not holding back and, and keeping up that like sort of aggressive uh, positioning that, that we're seeing from them that leading to these back to back to back goals in this game. Yeah, especially against a team, you know, that was clearly struggling with that type of oppressive offense. Uh, it's really important to, you know, adapt to your opponents. And if you're seeing them struggle with high pace offense, it's probably a good idea to keep doing that. It's going to be a bit of a miss touch from Brand there. It's going to lead to an own goal. 4 0 with 58 seconds left. An interesting way for UW to go up for their fourth goal. Aslan with a good challenge there. We're just going to play this one high off the wall, trying to get a second touch. Not quite able to follow that one up. Aslan low here. Bit of a dangerous spot for UW, but Vin's able to get back and help him. Off the sidewall again, Buka trying to follow that one up. Nice bump attempt from Aslan there. Great 50 in front of the net from Vin there. Dangerous ball, but well executed. It's going to give UW a bit of space here to rake off the sidewall. Been up for this one, a good challenge. A dangerous ball here as Booker barely able to make contact with that one. And there's our clear from Vin. Eight seconds left, up four goals. I think we're going to see Series 1 from this new UW Esports team go in their favor. Yeah, that's great to see. I mean, this is, this is uh, as far as I know, the first this is the first competitive game these three guys have played together. So to come out and get a win right off the bat like that, that's great to see. Yeah, definitely something we want to see. It's great to watch UW esports players win. I mean, that's that's yeah. what I'm here for. I, I want to see I want to see us come out of these uh, these series victorious. Uh, but you know, a couple of things that we saw from them that could be done better, and a lot of things that we saw from them that were done really well. Uh, what what were your kind of highlights from this first set? I mean, I think the the uh, Vin de Bunker connection. That's oh. that's what I'm thinking has been the the highlight. I mean, this might be because Vin and Bunker have played a little bit longer together. I mean, they they were on uh, on the B team previously, um, so maybe, maybe that explains that. But it was, I mean, the those Vin Bunker passes were were incredible, and the, the Bunker finish as well. Definitely exciting to see out of any, you know, team is when they set up those really solid passing plays, especially, you know, in the air sidewall passing plays like we saw out of them twice. Uh, not an easy thing to execute with, you know, so much pacing, uh, such high speeds and th that kind of unexpected uh, interference from the defense that comes with playing 3v3 Rocket League. Uh, it's definitely impressive to see executed from from these players. Yeah, and another sort of this is sort of like a minute detail about those both of those plays, but Vin was able to get so much power on the pass that the um, the ball crosses half field, and when you're sitting in net, you're looking at Vin making this pass. So from the perspective of Guadalajara, you're looking at Vin making this pass. You might not even know that Bunker's backdoor behind you, but he gets this opportunity to take the shot that you don't even know is coming. Which uh, so if you can make these get these huge passes off like that, these infield passes that uh, really gives opportunities as long as you have people upfield like like Bunker was. Yeah, I think that's exactly what, you know, is dangerous about those passing plays is the unexpected nature of it. You know, you don't see that other player coming, that ball that you're expecting to be a shot, all of a sudden it's played out midfield 
and you've got another shot from a different angle that you didn't quite account for and that leads to a goal um which you know could bring us to another point of guadalajara you know having to recognize those plays when they're happening and i think we saw a lot of those quick succession goals from uw being a, a direct result of great passes great infield um infield clears and things uh it's it's on guadalajara to kind of recognize that that's happening and they just barely weren't able to do it but a great game two and great game three from guadalajara uh definitely what we wanted to see that you know end of game one guadalajara game two guadalajara uh was really exciting to see and i think a really good opponent to show off both teams uh skill and give us a good insight into our first set from our new uw sports team yeah yeah i definitely agree but with that, I think we're going to go into a quick break here, uh, take a bit of a rest as we switch into our second set, which is going to be against Colorado A&M. So with that, stick around and make sure you're here when you come back for set two.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back from that quick break. Glad you're all sticking around as we get into set number two here. UW Esports versus Colorado A&M, another team that we have not seen play so far. So it'll be interesting to see how they stand up against a team that's already 1-0 in their debut on the Swish Yeah, this should be really interesting. I mean, I like there's a lot of really great stuff that we saw from from UW in this last uh, this last best of three. And I'm, I'm excited to see what uh, what UW can bring against this the second team they've they've played against. You know. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they're able to, you know, kind of dominate the first half of the game in this set as well, like we saw out of games one, two, and three from UW Sports. Really kind of putting the, the pressure on right out the gate, bringing the scoreline up as quickly as possible. Or if, you know, Colorado A&M, maybe, maybe they're a bit of a higher paced team and they're able to bring it to UW. It'll be interesting to see uh, how this, this set kind of works out. I think that's the best part of watching these new teams play is just kind of seeing how our players adapt to each and every new play style yeah absolutely and then one thing to keep in mind is this this is uh this team they're going up against also won their first game so <laughs> we've kind of weeded out a little bit and yeah interesting yeah i think with that we're not going to make anyone wait any longer we're going to get it into uh game one of this this best of three series Fifty from U Dub there. As I'm trying to challenge that, really let me recover. From, from Roomba. Scout playing this one out, and Aslan with a ball down. Not really to anyone there. Is Vince gonna take a fifty in the corner? With this ball high off the backboard and a good clear there from Colorado. Touch out wide, and it's gonna give Colorado a bit of space. High off the backboard, trying for the double there. Good interception from Bunker. But not quite able to get a clear out of it. Still a dangerous ball for UW. And up for this one. Good soft touch there. And that's that big brain that we like to see out of Vin. Not trying to clear that ball to the corner, but instead positioning that car in the exact way that we need to get a soft touch, keeping that ball close, and keeping possession for UW. Yeah, up, up until that moment, uh... Colorado A&M had a bunch of pressure and Vin sort of taking his time and, and controlling it was able to get it all the way out to the... That's, that's the just going to be here. an open net. Uh, goal, goal one already and that's a good way for UW to start it out. I think a little bit of overconfidence there from Colorado seeing UW on their back foot for so long. They just gave up a little bit of too much space in the midfield and that ball should going to trickle out. Bunker with the ball off the corner here. It's going to be a high clear. Seeing a bit of a open net there, but Aslan able to get back in time and get a solid 50 there. It's going to lead to a counter attack from UW. Good 50 from Vin, almost right in the net. It's going to be the clear that Colorado needs to buy them some time, get a little bit of boost. So UW is now stuck on their defensive half. Good save there. Ball 50 to off the corner. Big long aerial there from Aslan, just trying to get that ball out, but it's going to be quickly returned from Colorado. Low boost from Vin, and it's not going to be enough, and that's going to be goal number one to tie this one up from Colorado. Yeah, really tough read off the back wall there for, for Vin. Not too much you can do there when your last man back, you got 12 boost. Yeah really tough to, to make those saves happen. Colorado really good to capitalize on that. Realize just the tough spot that they had put Vin in to tie this game up. Trying to play this one out. It's gonna be a good read from Colorado. It's gonna keep that ball in UW's half. I think we've seen a majority of this game on the blue side of the field. Yeah, definitely. I mean, no, no sustained pressure really for, uh, for UW. That one goal came from a kind of fluke clear that kind of trickled into the Colorado A&M net. You're getting cleared off that ball. It's unable to follow this one up, but Rimbo a little bit quicker, and that's gonna be a shot on net. Well placed. 
And Colorado is going to get their second goal and put them in a spot to come out of this game victorious. Yeah, that's just a great shot. Yeah, definitely a, a tough one if you're UW's defense. Not too much you could do differently there. A great pass infield, good placement from Scout. And with an opportunity here, ball high. Able to get a read on that and play it below the, the Colorado defender. Now we've got Aslan as the only man back, and that's going to be another goal for Colorado. Did you see where, uh, where Bunker went on that play? I kind of lost him, and I think that, yeah. that was our missing player there. Yeah, maybe a bump or uh, just awkward and low boost on the way back or something. Something indeed. UW now scrambling to get a couple goals here on the board with a minute left in game one. With ball off backboard here, Roomba with good patience, getting a good 50. We're following this one up. Solid aerial 50-50. Then plays this one out to the corner. It's going to be quickly returned by Colorado. No time to breathe if you're UW. No. Wow. Another really well-placed shot. Yeah, and it's just solid rotations in that midfield from Colorado a and I think we're, we're seeing great midfield pressure, and they're just not letting that ball out of UW's half. What do you think uh, UW needs to do differently here as we get into game two? So it looks like this one is a little bit cut and dry. Uh, I'd like to see like just staying a little bit closer together. So I think when you're you're playing a fast team like this, um, like this Colorado A&M team, you tend to get in these situations where when you do get the ball, you end up in a 1v3. Uh, so like maybe you get the ball and you clear it back and then you follow your follow your clear and you try to Keep pressure, but your teammates are stuck getting boost because you've had You know the opposing team has been pressuring for so long So maybe just to like kind of coordinate a little bit better So when when they are clearing they have two guys going upfield or if they're on a dribble play they have they have a teammate to possibly pass to um, Yeah, I definitely agree. I think UW just kind of struggling in that empty space, that no man's land of the field. Uh, being stuck on the defensive rotations, they were definitely holding it together uh, until, like you said, they, they get a little starved, they have to go out for boost, and those rotations start to collapse a little bit, and then we see goals from, from Colorado A&M that wouldn't necessarily be happening if, like you said, UW kind of filled that no man's land space just a little bit tighter. Yeah, uh, and I think even... Um, I think all three goals might have come on on counterattacks from from Colorado a and I I don't remember if there's anything that came. So Colorado a and had a lot of sustained pressure, but UW was doing a great job of, of like defending against that pressure. It was in situations where they actually had a, a chance to counterattack where they were spreading themselves out too much and then leaving themselves open to, to quick responses. Yeah, definitely. Like I had commented on earlier, that solid midfield presence from Colorado uh, was I, I think that nail in the coffin for UW a bit in game one uh, just not being able to commit and get a clear uh, is is really tough especially when you've had that sustained pressure that clear is your saving grace that's that thing that kind of opens up the field gives you a bit of time gives you a bit of space to go get that big boost to go pick up a couple of pads and if that other team is right there to stop that clear in its tracks well now you're back on the back foot again you're stuck maybe even out of position because you thought that clear was going to be successful uh, and it, it puts you in a really tough spot. So I think like we've been saying, UW tightens it up a little bit, get a bit more of that midfield presence, especially on those clears uh, and find those gaps. And I think we could see a very different outcome in game two. Now UW down a game here in this best of three means if Colorado wins this one, it's going to be our new UW Esports team uh, taking their first loss of the season. And definitely a good way to start that out. If you're a and I think we saw every single UW player just kind of freeze and watch that one because there's not too much you can go and do to, to make that save. Yeah, that's a really tough angle to shoot from the corner like that. And I think with, with that kind of velocity, I think it was a bit of a pinch. 
Uh, it's a really tough save, and we see another solid shot from Colorado and a good bump to put that player out of position in the net. And that's going to put them up 2-0 in the first 30 seconds. UW getting a bit of a taste of their own medicine. <laughs> in with good control here, a good high flick. What we like to see from Vin, that, that patient presence, taking good 50s. Ball high from Colorado here, a good read from Aslan. Following this one up, ball stopped dead in the midfield. No one there to follow it up quite as quickly. Aslan with a good bump that's going to clear up some space, and UW's going to have a bit of a chance. 50-50 in front of net, and Roomba's going to have the possession there. Ball played behind. Not able to make it there in time, but definitely a dangerous ball for UW. Off the sidewall here as Roomba gets a solid clear. Then reading that one and playing it off the side as well. Hooker a bit close for comfort. It's going to lead to that clear going over both of their heads. Aslan just playing the time in the backfield of 50 out wide. Yeah, Roomba another one of those space. great air dribble 50s I was talking about in that last series. Yeah, and we, that was what we wanted to see as well from that positioning from Bunker right there to follow that 50-50 up. That's what we need UW to keep doing if they want to get these clears on defense. A clear from Vin there. Quickly collected by Colorado. Under two players, and that's going to be a shot on, and Vin with our this, first goal. This is really great. I mean, that, that huge clear, well, one thing we saw there was they were all up in the play as soon as that clear came out. And, and just having that sort of presence there leads to kind of a panic. And I think, in, you know, a, a demo as well, but a little bit of panic from the uh, um, Colorado A&M team. Yeah. It's definitely tough when you get those big, long clears and you're kind of set in that position where you have to maintain, have to collect. It gives the other team a lot of time to crash in on that play, like you were saying. And uh, that's exactly what we need from UW, just taking up that space that has been so open for Colorado's offense. Good communication there from UW's defense. One of those balls that very often gets double committed on. Saw so Aslan taking control and playing that one out. Up spot Bunker getting bumped in net. This one played high. And that's going to be a good offensive play from Colorado that's going to give them another goal here. Another really, really tough angle for the to try to make that save from. Yeah, especially with Bunker being last man back. Uh, being kind of stuck on the back foot and then getting bumped. Uh, not too much you can do if you're Bunker in that situation. Need a little bit of help from your teammates. Yeah. Playing this one out, Vin right there to put it back in. It's gonna get pinched out by Colorado's defense. Aslan plays this one high. Bunker already up for it. I like the confidence. That's what we need if we want goals. Aggressive offense, not gonna score, settling back and letting those plays go by. The touch there from Vin to corner. Space here, Fifter and Roomba. Roomba with a good recovery and follow through, and that's going to be a dangerous ceiling shot and a good save from Aslan. So play it high by Scout, one UW player down. A good read from Roomba there to keep this ball on UW's half. A minute left, down two goals. Can UW make a recovery? Oh, <laughs> oh man. What a save from Ruma there. A very hard shot from Aslan. Just barely able to get a touch on that one. And a tough read there. With a misread from Aslan, that's going to be another goal for Colorado. UW definitely in a tough spot here. Three goals down with a minute left. Fifty from Vin. This one gets played out by Colorado. Aslan right there to play that one back in. Well, bounces high. Vin trying to get a touch on it. Bunker's up for this. High off the sidewall. Quickly followed up by Colorado A&M, and this is a lot of ball time in air. That clock continues to tick. It's getting even harder for UW to bring this one back. Another really nice example of, of patient play from Vin. But is that patience enough? 
10 seconds left. I think that that is going to be it for this series. We're going to see a, a good series win from set number one and definitely a bit of a tougher loss from set number two. Ball's still in the air. Zero seconds on the clock. Can you put one more on? Doesn't look like they can. Ball hits ground. It's going to be series number two going in favor of Colorado A&M. Yeah, that's a... That's a, that's a tough loss there. I, I, I don't think that that they were really like outclassed it in so much as they were kind of put in awkward situations. And maybe maybe that is like a, a um, something that will improve as we see this team play more and more games together and, and have more practices. Yeah, for sure. I think that when you have that pacing advantage as a new team, uh, those little minute differences in play style and uh, communication aren't as big of an issue, but when you start to get up in that level where you're matching the pacing or even getting outpaced yourself, it comes down to solid rotations and just kind of those solid core things that Rocket League players have to execute on. And uh, if you're you know, not able to, to do that to the fullest extent, it, it really starts to show, uh, especially with those new teams. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What do you think was different about Colorado A&M versus Guadalajara that kind of led to a tougher series for UW? I mean, I definitely think Colorado A&M was, was faster, a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit like better chemistry on Colorado A&M where they were, you know, I think in against Guadalajara, we're, see, we're seeing examples of uh, UW taking advantage of, of kind of small misplays from from Guadalajara there weren't as many of that that sort of thing going on with Colorado A&M but probably the main difference was just Colorado A&M was a bit faster and, yeah, and like, just like you said like the um when you're playing against a faster team that uh the kind of mistakes that you make are going to become way more important than if you were playing against a slow slower team exactly and I think that you know, like the, these players played this this series back to back and you come out of, you know, series number one, feeling like the fastest team, uh, feeling really confident. And then you go into series number two and that team is a step above the, the team you played before. It could be really tough to adjust your mindset and adjust your play style. I think we, we saw that bite you dub a little bit, uh, especially with that midfield presence from Colorado A&M that wasn't quite there with Guadalajara. Uh, it, it made those clears and made getting out of that defensive half, getting that that pressure uh, removed, it, it made that a lot a lot harder for UW. And I think that that's where we saw them kind of falter a bit uh, in that second series. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. That's another good another reason I, I would really like to see UW stay really aggressive, even in these games where they're up big. Like they were up. We were talking about this in the previous series where they're they're up three goals and and then they're kind of playing. Uh, cautious, trying to keep their lead, but you have another series to play on the next, uh, you know, in, in the, the next round. So if you, if you want to keep kind of the momentum of playing fast, maybe one good way to do that is to just not stop playing fast, regardless of the score. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that was definitely a, a good first showing from this new UW Sports team. We saw a lot of great plays in in series number one, and and definitely uh, a solid showing of some of those gaps in, in that play style and some of those differences that these players are so great at adapting and overcoming uh, that we'll get to see, you know, this UW sports team improve on as we watch them down the line. Uh, but with that, I want to say congratulations to our new UW sports team. Definitely a great showing on their first stream, uh, taking a solid win against Guadalajara and putting up a good fight against Colorado A&M. Congrats to Colorado for uh, coming out on top of series number two and, you know, kind of showing that they, they had a good dominant fast presence, like you were saying. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us on our UW Twitch channel uh, tonight and spending time with our production crew, our players and our talent. It's, it's definitely great to have you guys out here supporting us. There's a lot going on behind the scenes that uh, you guys don't quite get to hear or see, but there's there's a lot of people that make this happen. And it's, it's really great to have everybody there watching us and uh, supporting us along the way. Uh, remember to check us out at U of Wa Esports on most platforms. That includes Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, uh, and join the Discord if you're interested in getting behind the scenes, joining that volunteer team, and just kind of being updated on when we're streaming and events that are going to be up and coming. But with that being said, it's time for us to turn in for the night. 
Uh, we hope to see you all in the future as we bring even more exciting esports content your way.